Hey, this is Alex and thank you very much for so I really appreciate your visit. And today I want to focus my efforts in trying to solve this very simple and common problem, which is the factorial of a number. That's very, very simple and you will see why and probably you have heard about that before. I just want to start by giving you the fancy definition probably uh, of what a factorial is, which is a factorial of a number n is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. That's, it. That's the fancy definition. And to be honest, I'm not, I'm not smart enough to understand all these definitions. So I'm gonna take my iPad and try to show you what exactly this means because uh, probably you're gonna, you're gonna be on the same page when it comes to factorial numbers. So let's get into it. Let's say that you want to calculate the factorial of 5. You know, we have 5 here. And if you want to indicate that you are calculating the factorial of 5, you use a, an exclamation mark. Here we go. And then how you calculate that is you get the first number, 5, which is the number itself. And then you multiply the number with the number minus 1. 5 minus 1, 4 then here we go and now you have 4 and you multiply 4 by 4 minus 1 which will be 3 <laughs> and this is a very simple pattern and you have now 3 being multi multiplied by 2 which is 3 minus 1 so here you go and then you have 2 being multiplied by 1 that's it, that's a very, very simple problem. And you have 120. So let me see here, you have five being multiplied by four, which is 20, and then 20 being multiplied by three, which is 60, and then by two, which is 120, and 120 being multiplied by one, which is 120. So that's it, so that's the, the, the result of this calculation. Very, very simple very very common and uh, yeah that's it so let's try to translate that to ruby code here we go now it's time to go crazily into code and as you can see if you have been watching the series uh, you have seen that we are using this uh, repo with website which is amazing because you can just go there and write the code snippet in the, lang the language that you like the most which is incredible because now I'm using this Ruby online compiler and you don't need to have this Ruby environment on your machine, which is amazing. Don't have any excuse to you know to follow along all of these tutorials. So the first step that I want to take is of course, create the method that receives a number and then calculates the factorial of that number. So in Ruby, we say def and factorial factorial okay and then here you go let's create this let's call the puts which will um, which will write the result on this console here and then you have factorial of five which will be our first example perfect the next step is that I want to go from five being multiplied by four by three by two by one so we are going from five to one, which means that you have to get, oh, I completely forgot to pass the number as an argument, which means that you can create a while expression because you are going from one number to another number. Well, let's create this while. And as you can see, if you are receiving five as an argument, you can go from five to one, which means that I can use this number and say, hey, while number is greater than one, you keep going, you know, you keep going. And that's it. Usually when you have this uh, while expression, you have to stop the while expression at some point in time. So what happens is that I want to say, hey, number will receive number minus one, which in this case, you will decrement the number, in this case, this number argument for each iteration. To be honest, I don't like to change the number that you're receiving here, but again, I don't worry about that right now. That's not my, my some issue, you know, that's not an issue right now. And I'm going to change that later. 
Perfect. Now what I want to do is I have this Y expression and it's, it seems that it's working. And now, and now the next step is that I want to store the result in a variable, which in this case will be a local variable. So I'm going to create this variable called result. And this result, as you can see, the first step is taking the number as an argument. So I'm going, I'm going to say that the result will be the number itself. And then I'm going to calculate for each iteration the new number for this variable. So in this case, you have 5 being multiplied by 4, which is 20. Now I want to store this 20 in a variable. And the next step is saying this 20 will be multiplied by 3, which in this case will be 60. And now you have 60 being multiplied by 2. And you can go on and on. So what happens here is that I will say the result variable we receive the result, the value, the previous value that I already have, being multiplied by number, which is the pattern minus one. In this case, number minus one. And that's it. So that sounds that this is the same thing that we were doing on my iPad. So let me see. I have this factorial. Result is receiving the number. The number here is controlling my Y expression. I'm decrementing it each time that I execute this uh, Y expression. And then I have to return this result. Perfect. Seems really okay. I'm going to execute this and let me see if everything is okay. Whoa, that's okay. That's, that's the first time that something works, you know, uh, really, really, really well. And then if you have, for example, four, let me say, let me execute this again. And 24, it sounds okay because four, you have four being multiplied by three, being multiplied by two, being multiplied by one, which is four being multiplied by three, 12 by two, 24 by one is still 24. And that's great. If you have factorial of one, you have one, Perfect, so it seems that it's working. Uh, the next step is actually, we have a definition where uh, the factorial of zero is one. So we are going to solve that in the next uh, step, the next video. That's it, that's it for today. I just want to make sure that we are on the same page when it comes to factorial numbers. And then for the next, I think that I'm going to create two or maybe three or maybe four versions of the same algorithm, you know, doing uh, some refactors. And yeah, that's it. I'm going to create a more readable code and let's see where it goes. Thank you very much for watching this and see you in the next video.